Hi, I'm Rydian, and I'm here to introduce Mabinogi Data Helper. Now, this is a program that can help you look through the installed game data in order to find stats, um, unused items, specifics of enchants, and it has numerous tools for helping to update the wiki on new things as well. So, the first thing you do when you start it up is you're presented with the settings here because you need to tell it where to load the data from. So, you need to know where Mabinogi is installed. If you are using Steam, you can right click a game in Steam, go to the prop properties, and in the local files tab, choose browse local files, and that'll get you to wherever you have that game installed. I personally use Mabby non-Steam, so I'm going to go to settings here. Now by default, this is going to be unchecked. You're going to want to check this to read the pack files, because this will just read it from a standard unmodded Mabinogi install, and this doesn't do any modding, this just reads the installed game data. If you do have the game extracted for some reason, you can, you know, use the default setting. You can load multiple packs here if you want to, you know, do something with overseas things, whatever you want. So here I'm going to check this, then I'm going to browse to the package files. So for me, using non-Steam, I go to my C drive where I have it installed. There's Nexon. In the Nexon folder, there's a library folder. In there, Mabinogi, app data, package folder. Select that folder. Now, down here, we have the select region. I play on the US version of Mabinogi, the North America version, and so I have regular USA here selected. Now, if you are loading a foreign version of Mabinogi install, then you're going to want to, you know, choose the proper version, because the different regions have different features turned on and off that make certain things available or not available or functional or whatever, so generally you're going to want to make it match. So I choose load data and I wait for it to load. And the first tab it's going to bring up is the skills tab. Now this is the list of all the skills that exist in game that are turned on right now in North America because we're using the North America features file from the North America install. So you can see there's the list of skills here ordered by skill ID by default. You can uh, sort them by something else if you want by clicking on the header names for example. You could sort like this and we get them in alphabetical order. Now scrolling through you can see the icons. If you want to save an icon you right click it and just choose copy. However, you can see that whenever we select a skill, we can see the stats for the skill. Now, the different values, are they could be internal names, they could be things that are missing, for example, variables, or they could be translated things. It really depends on each skill. So, for example, let's go look at Error Revolver. We can see there's various stats here, and these are the stats that would generally be converted into a table format for the wiki. So, yeah, you can see all sorts of stats there, including like the bonus, um, bonus stats for leveling up, like the bonus dexterity per rank. From here, you can actually choose export rank data, and it'll actually copy it into the Mabinogi wiki table format for you, and you can check what to include and what not to include. You can choose where it starts, where it ends, especially because some skills have Dan rank, so you might want to do that. And if a skill has multiple versions, for example, um, Let's look for Smash, searching for a skill name, local name, and yep, combat base version, which is the human version. We look at that, we can see skill features. The Smash skill has been updated multiple times since it was first introduced. So we have the base version, then we have the combat system renewal, which I believe was um, G15. Then we have the Talent Renovation Close Combat, that's when Smash got the bleed and stun effects added in the Renovation Update, or Combat Renewal, I forgot what NA called it, and the Skill Promotion Renewal is the Dan update that added the Dan ranks to Smash. So you can like uncheck these and you can get at the original values. You can see some of the values may change, like, let's see, where's the damage percent. There we go. So 620. So you can see without the uh, Dan feature checked, the Dan ranks do not get increased damage on Smash because until the Dan update, Smash didn't get increased uh, damage when you, when you Danned it, but now it does. Alright, so training requirements, it lists the training requirements. 
let's see. You can or, uh, resize these tables as needed. And of course, export training requirements in wiki table format. And then skill description gives you two descriptions. The basic description when you know of the skill but you haven't learned it yet, for example, rank novice. And then the expanded description once you know it. Again, you know, for easy copy pasting into the wiki so you don't have to type it all up yourself. Uh, you can search by things, skill ID, name, category ID, internal name, category name, English name. Um, it's worth pointing out, internal name is the name that the game uses internally. Now this name is like the data name, and you can see that it uses underscores instead of um, spaces and stuff like that, and they lack special characters because this is like the, what would directly be in the XMLs. The English name is the directly translated name. Uh, hold on, let me actually sort by category. Let's see. Scroll down because I want to point out gun skills. Um, did I did I miss them? Am I scrolling too fast? I think I did. Oh, it looks like some of them didn't load. Okay, there we go. So you can see that some of the skill things have definitely uh, had changed names. So for example, the original name of uh, Grapple Shot is actually closer, and the English name that KR uses is also closer, but the local name, that's the localized, that is the translated name, is Grapple Shot. So the names you're looking for are probably in here. Also, in general, if you see anything Korean, it's an unused skill or a monster skill. This doesn't just show player skills, it shows all sorts of things that we don't actually have access to. For example, sorting by skill ID and going up, you may have noticed advanced reading, advanced book reading. Those of you who have played Mabinogi for a very long time may be familiar with the concept, otherwise it doesn't even matter anymore. There's other unused skills like Town Cry here. Um, <laughs> do not use weaving, like the, the hidden milling skill and stuff like that, but yeah, have fun. So looking at the items tab, here we can search for items by various properties. Uh, we can search by, you know, the item name, the local name via what we know. For example, um, divine... C would get us the divine crossbow and the divine guns. Internal name, let's look for divine internally. And we can find all sorts of things, including, let's look at this, Crusader Experience. Let's see. So this is something that is given to us in sort of an item form as a form of experience. We can look at this Crusader Subskill Training Seal. Well, we looked for Divine. Why are we getting Crusader? That's because a lot of Crusader things are called Divine things over in Korea. And you can see the uh, this is the Crusader Subskill Training Seal. This is what we get for the G21 Part 1 event. The internal name is Divine Subskill Training Experience Seal. So that's why it showed up when we searched for divine under internal name. So if you have the translation of a name from Korea and you want to know what it was translated to, you can try searching by internal name, but you know there's no guarantee it's going to match. You can search through description, uh, item tags, for example, divine underscore will let us see the divine weapons because they are generally tagged as such. For example, the um, find one without too many tags. Uh, they have, okay, the Divine Crossbow. You can see item categories, which is the tags here. This is what the game uses for determining what sort of repairs to use, um, what sort of properties the, the item has, how it's used, what enchants go on it, things like that. Basically what determines the makeup and use of the item. Of course, you can see here there's the uh, icon. You can save the icon as well. This brings up a prompt, saving it as the ID, so you can, you know, show people the icon. The reroll button here rerolls the colors. So we can see, didn't work very well on that one. Let's, let's roll on the guns. Uh, let's roll on the spell book then. Oh, the spell book is fixed. Uh, okay, let me choose a better item then. <laughs> Borealis Blade. There we go. We can really see the colors change when we re-roll on this. There we go. Um, the Copy XML button copies the raw XML for the item, just in case there's some miscellaneous property not displayed here that you want to look for manually. It just copies it to the clipboard. Anyways, over here we have the name of the item, we have the item ID, the inventory size, 2x4. Um, if it stacks, it'll be displayed here. For example, um, Crystal... Pure crystal does not stack. 
Um, let's see, where is it? Is that a beginner fire crystal? Max stack 300. Anyways, looking back at the blade again, the internal name, uh, usable by, if there's any set restrictions on the item, it'll list them here. Uh, of course, this is not always entirely accurate to the game because there can be more restrictions than are actually here, but this is generally what you go by. There's a description, you can highlight it and copy paste. The tags here, uh, down here we have the uh, IDs and names of the palettes that each part uses. So for example, if you were to out fire up a standard die amp, the Frosted Borealis blade would not show up because all three parts are metal. But here you can see what one, two, and three are. Um, down here is just some internal info for the um, inventory icon and the mesh names for people that may want to like extract the meshes for something or see what might be using a duplicate net mesh because for example you can copy the mesh name here and then you can actually search by mesh name. All right. Up to the right here, we have these item stats. Note that these are always base stats of the item class itself. Uh, the upgrades, all that jazz. There is an item upgrades tab, but by default, it doesn't display anything because certain upgrades only go on certain tagged items. So for example, if we were to type, um, let's see, is Scythe a tag? Oh, it is. Okay. So uh, anything that would be tagged Scythe can get these types of upgrades on it. You can see here the internal name, the local name, how much proficiency it costs, the upgrade between thing that the wiki uses, the cost in gold, which NPCs, and the stat effects down there. And the second category is gem upgrades. Of course, instead of like copying the tags over, if you're looking at an item, you can just click see item upgrades for this item. And bam, there we go. There's the upgrades for the uh, that would apply to the Frosted Borealis Blade. There's the stat effects, there's the gem upgrades, and all that jazz. All right, so right down here, if the item has set effects, they are displayed here. Do note that these are the base set effects on the item. This does not cover additional set effects. For example, if a gacha forces an item to have an, you know, an extra line of points or something on it, that's not part of the core item, so it wouldn't show up here. <laughs> now here we have action flag. This, the primary use of this is trade restriction. So for example, action flag zero is normal item, no trade restrictions, you can do all this. And this is in wiki data format. So if you wanna you know, edit an item thing, you can just copy paste this. Now, for example, if we were to, um, let's see. Um, Bakram was it? Yeah, Bakram's potential page one. Now, if we were to look at this, this has action flag one, static item. Now, this has true for most things, except you can't sell it to NPCs, and pick up other is also false. Since these are uh, action type one instead of zero, they cannot be picked up off of the floor by anyone other than the person who dropped them. And that's why when an NPC gets a kill on a zombie in a Baltane mission and it drops one of these pages, the player can't pick it up because it belongs to the NPC. So this is how we can tell things like that. Um, let's see. So action flag two, important item. That pretty much means permanent locked quest item. There's other things as well, like a character personal item. Let's see, important item, that's normal item. Let's see, um, enchant protection potions. So here is a type of enchant protection potion that is account personal item. This pretty much means you can trade it to other characters on your account, generally through the bank, but it can't leave your account. And here's another type of enchant protection potion, which is trade limit item. And you can see this basically means a single trade on it. Um, technically, the game allows more than one trade, but all of these items that are trade limited that I've ever seen always set the trade limit to one. So. Here's another one, and champ protection potion box, account personal, so that's basically what that means. Let's see, going back to the blade. So item type, that's eight, two-handed, generally for weapons or equips. Uh, grade zero, not entirely sure what this is for, honestly. <laughs> Now, XML variables, if the item has additional data, not all items do, but some items do have additional data, it'll generally be in the XML variables. Now you can see here, enhanced type R and enhanced type S, those are pointers to which red and blue special upgrade table 
the item uses. Hit sound sword because sometimes there's overrides like that. For example, beam swords have a unique hit sound on them. And here's the important part, random product. This is the rolls. For example, minimum damage 0 to 45, maximum damage 0 to 64, etc. Then for weapons that generally have like splash info on them, stamina usage, and all that jazz. So there's all the item info and the item upgrades. Now if we look at item set effects, we can sort by item ID, sort by the local name of the item, and sort by the set effect itself. Now there's one thing to note here, is that certain items have set effects that are roles. For example, um, Valiant's armor. If we look at the armor, item set effect absorption enhancement 2 to 4. So when crafted, it will be a random roll from 2 to 4. If we look at that um, armor, there we go, 2 to 4. So you can see this basically matches what you can find in the item info. However, you can find additional info. So let's look at this. Uh, by the way, you can when you're clicking anything, you can hit Control c and just copy it. So this warrior armor, you can see attack speed increase 1 to 4 and stamina usage reduction 2 to 4. So if it has multiple things, it'll show up there fine. And by copy pasting the various types of info between the tabs, you can figure out what you need like I just did there. Now there is a little additional piece of information. Let's see, where is it? All right, there we go. So for example, call in plate gauntlet. If we look at it here. You can see that it has Explosion Defense 2 and Stamina Usage Reduction 3. However, it can get an additional point in Stamina Usage Reduction if it is 90 quality or above. So if items that are smithed and tailored get a potential quality bonus, the Item Set Effects tab and the Item tab here will show what the bonus is and what the quality threshold is. Uh, spoiler warning, it's pretty much always 90 quality or above plus one point on the main set effect, but you know. <laughs> you know next and they may change that next week all right now let's look at the enchants tab this one's fun <laughs> so the enchant id the enchant rank local name enabled regardless of whether it can be put on you know without steps 100 percent success is generally only reserved for unique event enchants or newbie enchants and repair cost is the plus percentage for example all of these are zero because they are no multiplier however for example if we look at whoops if I can type, if we look at Black Scar, it's minus 6% repair cost. If we look at the Gurgashi enchant, which is a suffix enchant, so it's down here, repair cost plus 400%, the 400 here, which means five times repair cost. Um, and you can see the stats here. So Gurgashi is a rank eight regardless, uh, five times multiplier, and there's the stats. And you can literally just hit control C, copy the stats. And the allowed items shows the tags of what happens. So for example, let's look at um, Roaring. This is a new enchant that was added with a G21 update. This is for a uh, magic wand, specifically the divine wand. So for example, if I copy this and go to items and I search for tags and I look for the divine wand enchant tag, it only brings up one item. So the roaring enchant literally only goes on the divine tribold for now. You know, this is an MMO constantly updated. This could change in the future, but you can see the stats and stuff here. Now there's various things you can search by. For example, if I wanted to search by allowed items and I, and I wanted to type in divine as the tag and I hit enter and there's all the items that are currently, all the, sorry, enchants that are in NA that go onto divine items. So it looks like there's one for the divine bastard sword, one for the divine short lance, one for the divine tribal wand and one for the divine shield. Uh, there will be more later on because like KR has got like two or four more I don't know don't quote me on that uh, something else you can search for is the stat change um, you can search in multiple ways and anything in this text for example maximum damage plus if you want to say something that has at least 50 as its minimum well there you go there's an enchant with no name so obviously it's not one we're supposed to get and it literally goes on anything it is rank 7 and maximum damage plus 50 i'm sure people would love to have that one <laughs> let's say maximum damage plus 20. there we go so you can see you can search by that you can also just simply search for effects for example p 
piercing. So with this, I can find all the enchants that add piercing. Siege, Secret, Cartel, this very interesting looking one called Intense that is rank 1 and has piercing level plus 3 and goes on lances. And a suffix, penetrating, breakthrough, metal, 67th floor, an un unused 67th floor copy that is 100% success rate. The things you find in the game data. Um, and then two new enchants that were in a recent gacha, Meteoroid, and, uh, well, Pillar's actually from um, new raids. All right, and now the last tab that's currently in is titles. Now titles, there's multiple ways that titles can work and not all title data is actually in the game client. Some of it is purely done by the server and will not display here. You can see some values, but not what it truly does. Now, you may notice that this seems a little weird here, but that's because certain titles have a default and they also have a male and a female name. So for most of these, you'll find that they are the exact same thing. However, if I look up the married title, you can see that for male, it displays husband, for female, it displays wife. If we look up the super mom or super dad title, we can see if you're, <laughs> if you're a male, it's a super dad. If you're a female, it's a super mom. If for some reason you manage to wear the title while being neither gender, it will display the default, the super mom slash super dad. If anyone manages to do that, have 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 fun. That would be an interesting bug report. Now you can see most titles have just a single set of effects, which is stat changes, because that's generally what most titles do. However, there's actually four panels because you can get other things. Now let's look at the ancient enchant. This is not one that um, players can obtain, but if we look at this, we can see the Ancient has multiple types of bonuses. Now the standard stat bonuses, so these are the multipliers that Ancients get. On here is an, a script, for example, uh, actually it's one of these is a script, but this is some additional data. So these are the bonuses that happen when the monster dies, and this is some extra data that NPCs get it, I guess. I don't even know how they code some of these things, really. So you can search through the various skills and items and, you know, titles and enchants and upgrades and all that. So hopefully this will help people edit the wiki or simply just look through this in order to find all the info you want, you know, like to find all the IDs if you want to like preview new items and there you go, have fun. <laughs>